In this lab, you're going to be learning very important techniques that you'll use throughout the semester in microbiology. It's known as aseptic technique. A few definitions you should be familiar with. First, the definition of sterile. Sterile means absence of all microbes and spores. There is no such thing as a little bit sterile. It's like being a little bit pregnant. You are either pregnant or you're not. It is either sterile or it is not. Aseptic means the absence of pathogens only. Pasteurization is an example of an aseptic technique. Pasteurization, as you'll learn later, involves heating milk to a specific temperature, and that destroys the pathogenic or disease-causing microorganisms, but does not destroy all organisms in the specimen. Only the pathogens have been destroyed. These terms are often used interchangeably. For example, the sterile field in the operating room uh, is not really a sterile field. It really should be called an aseptic field because pathogens hopefully will be removed. But every step is taken to ensure that bacteria are not in this area, but still bacteria could be in a sterile field. In micro microbiology, we use aseptic transfer. We really should be calling this sterile transfer because really we are doing more than just eliminating pathogens. We are eliminating all microorganisms when we are inoculating cultures. Another definition to be familiar with is contaminate. Contaminate is unintentional. It's to in unintentionally introduce microorganisms into an environment. Inoculate, on the other hand, is intentional. We intentionally introduce microorganisms onto petri plates, for example, in order to encourage them to grow. We inoculate media with the intent to prevent contamination using aseptic technique. This plate shows you a great deal of fungal contamination. We'll be using a number of tools in this lab. First is the Fisher burner. It's not called a Bunsen burner, it's a Fisher burner. It shoots out a flame about 1200 degrees Fahrenheit, so we must be very cautious when we are using the Fisher burner. You'll be sharing a Fisher burner with the person that is immediately next to you, not across the table, but immediately next to you. It has a gas flame. We light this gas flame with a striker. We don't use uh, a lighter. Lighters can backflash on us. If you're afraid of the striker, you can use a paper match. You'll have to bring those with you, uh, but a paper match you can lay onto the flame. I'll demonstrate how to light the flame when we get into lab. We use the Fisher burner to sterilize reusable tools, and we also use the Fisher burner for heat fixing slides that we will be learning about in the future. Hot air rises, so it's important to have this uh, flame around, around you while you are working. Microbes in the air are going to rise rather than fall on your bench and contaminate the work around you. When properly adjusted, the flame is going to have two cones. The inner cone is going to be blue. The outer cone is going to be orange. The blue inner cone is cooler than the orange cone that is on the outside. Blue is a cool color, orange is a warm color, so that's easy to remember. You are going to learn how to flame reusable loops and needles. You're always going to begin flaming in the blue inner cone. It's cooler, so liquids will come to a boil more slowly and evaporate. If you stick it immediately into the hotter area of the flame, liquids come to a boil so fast they actually splatter or spatter off of the loop or the needle and they could contaminate the area. Continuing with the tools you'll use, you'll be using an inoculating loop. We typically just call this a loop in the microbiology lab and it has a circular end that is very much like a bubble blower. So it's used to transfer from a liquid to a liquid. A liquid film will be carried across this loop and we can transfer it into another liquid or we can transfer it to a solid medium. We also use an inoculating loop to prepare a procedure called a tea streak. We do this to isolate bacteria and we'll be doing this in a future lab. Reusable loops are going to be sterilized in a flame. They're made out of a special metal called nichrome, which is an alloy of nickel and chromium. 
that come to red hot will, that will come to red hot very quickly and will kill microorganisms turning them to ashes and gas. We also have uh, disposable loops that we'll be using in later labs. Inoculating needles look just like inoculating loops except they don't have a loop at the end so they are straight. They can be sharp so always use caution around them. We use them to transfer from a solid medium to a solid medium. It's very easy to scrape up a colony for example from a petri dish and transfer it to another medium. That medium could either be solid or it could be a liquid. We also use a needle to pick a colony. For example, just touch a colony with the needle. Then we can isolate it to another petri dish, for example, or onto another auger medium. Reusable needles are sterilized in a flame, just like reusable, reusable loops. We're going to be using forceps. They're not called tweezers. They're forceps in the microbiology lab, and they also will have to be sterilized, but we can't hold these in a flame. We use to these to transfer things such as filter paper discs or solid samples. For example, a catheter that is sent to the laboratory, we want to transfer it onto, uh, into a liquid broth. Um, if a mycologist, a person who studies fungi, wants to uh, study fingernail clippings, for example, that would be a solid sample that would be transferred with forceps. Forceps can't be flamed directly. They would get too hot and you would burn your fingers. So we drip alcohol on the tips and ignite them quickly by just sticking them in the flame. We don't hold them in the flame. We just get the alcohol to ignite and then let the alcohol burn off. This is going to sterilize the forceps. Be careful not to drip flaming alcohol on the table, on your book, or on yourself. Be sure to hold the forceps horizontally above the table. If the forceps get too hot, you can always drop them in the sink. Uh, that's in the middle of your table. We also use pipettes in the microbiology laboratory. These pipettes are going to be wrapped sterilely, usually individually sterilely wrapped. We use them to measure liquid. At one end you're going to find a cotton plug. This is going to prevent contamination of the interior. We have to use some type of a suction, not from the mouth, but we have to have some type of suction in order to draw fluid up into the pipette. And having that piece of cotton there is going to prevent any uh, microorganisms from the air from contaminating our liquid. We use a pipetting device that's called a pie pump. I'll be demonstrating how to use a pie pump. We never mouth pipette in the microbiology laboratory. You want to always pay attention to the marks on the pipette and also to the meniscus. The meniscus is that curve of liquid that you see in the pipette. The larger the pipette the more pronounced this is going to be but this curvature is due to hydrogen bonding between the water molecules and the glass. You always want to read at the bottom of the meniscus and not the top. The, pup the pipettes that we use in this lab are very small. They only hold one milliliter so it's important to pay attention to the marks. Serological pipettes, the type we use in our lab, are marked TD. You would use a different type of pipette in a chemistry laboratory. These are usually marked TC. TD means to deliver. TC means to contain. A to deliver pipette is going to deliver the amount that you draw up, which means that you have to get everything out of the pipette. Now, this becomes a problem. I'm sorry, it has to be drained out by gravity. So you don't blow out these pipettes like you would with a TC pipette. A TC, a two-contained pipette, has to be blown out. You have to get everything out of that pipette. A TD pipette has to be drained by gravity. So it's going to deliver that amount of fluid that you've drawn up to the line. Now that creates a problem because gravity is not going to come into play when you have a pipette pump stuck on the end. So in order to overcome this we use something called a point-to-point -point delivery. If we want to deliver one-tenth of a milliliter for example we would deliver from the point 8 to the point 9. If we want to deliver one full milliliter if we drew the pipette, drew the liquid up to the pipette to the zero line and then we rolled it down 
with a pipette pump, we actually would get slightly more than one milliliter. So to avoid this, these one milliliter pipettes are going to have a minus 0.1 marking on them. If you draw up to the minus 0.1 and deliver down to the 0.9, now you've done a point-to-point -point delivery and you have exactly one milliliter delivered. There will be one-tenth of a milliliter roughly remaining in the pipette and you'll dispose of this. In this lab we're going to be using two different types of media. We'll be using a solid medium known as triptych soy auger. We abbreviate this TSA. It's made from soybeans. It's a nutritive, all-purpose medium. Most non-picky organisms will grow on this. We call them non-fastidious organisms. It is made with a broth and 1% powdered auger that will solidify this. We allow it to solidify on a slant board so it is going to create a surface upon which we can inoculate with bacteria. We'll also be using a triptych soy broth. This is a medium that is sort of an off yellowish color. It's made of soybeans as well. It's the same as TSA, but there's no auger put into it. What to expect in period one will be a demonstration of aseptic techniques, and then you will practice aseptic techniques and use all of the equipment described in these slides. Period two will go quickly. We're going to observe the tubes and samples from period one to see if you were successful. See you in lab.